Hello world, my name is Jay Sean, and I'm what they call an African American, but really at the end of the day I'm just an African in America. There's some things we need to talk about, I really just want to talk to my people, you know, and uh, I hate to say my people, I wish we lived in a world where we were all just people, but that's not the situation that we're in, and we got to deal with the situation that we're in. And what's the situation? Systematic white supremacy. Capitalism. There are two sides of the same coin. You know, and it's like black people don't understand that. I was at work yesterday, and I work, you know, for the Department of Defense. So, you know, I'm close to the beast. And I'm talking to a sister. You know, she's a military colonel. And, uh... She's an officer, and she has her own perspective on things, you know, and her perspective on things is the same as, you know, most Uncle Tom's and uh, Uncle Tomalina's or Aunt Tomalina's, whatever you want to call them, you know, if it, it, it's an abusive mentality, you know, an abuser mentality. If he just did this, he wouldn't have got this, and what we were talking about was, you know, of course, the talk of the day, which is police brutality. And, you know, brothers getting shot and killed and beat up. Now, this is a sister who has a son, a son that's going away to college. I would have thought she would have had some type of empathy. Some empathy, you know, just for, you know, selfishly, you know, just for her own child. But no, she didn't have any empathy. My child knows how to behave. You can't go out there and argue and wrestle with the cops and expect not nothing to happen. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how many black men who have not wrestled with cops and still ended up dead. Eric Gardner was getting choked out. And he didn't even scratch the cop. And he was getting choked out. You know? How many human beings would get choked out and not react? Not fight back, not do anything. He didn't do anything. He got literally killed with no resistance. For a man to be that size, his size. You know, Timmy Rice, he didn't even have a chance to you know, put his gun down or not like that. He didn't tussle with no cops. Mr. Crawford in Target didn't tussle with no cops. The gentleman running away got shot in the back in South Carolina. He didn't tussle with no cops. How about the brother that was away from college in North Carolina who knocked on that white lady's door and then she didn't want to open the door for him, called the cops on him. He's walking back to his car that broke down. He didn't tell so with no cops. These people are dead. I mean, we beat down to the point where we don't respect, well, that's another conversation for another time. But I, I, I expressed all these things to the sister and she gave me the look of you know, I don't care. My position is my position, and that's that. And my question to my black people was this. How do you expect other people to have empathy for us if we don't have empathy for each other? So I'm talking to my sisters right now, specifically. You don't have no empathy for your brother. You're the first one to throw him in jail. You're the first one to jump up and hit him. But if somebody white jumps on him, you want to go out there and say, hands up, don't shoot. And then when you do it, you do it in a selfish way. Well, I was out there marching like it's about you. Your black men are the targets. They just now starting to turn on y'all. They let y'all run around and help destroy the community. And they tired of your, your bullshit too now. You start to see more and more little girls getting beat up and they manhandled by the police. One was damn near MAA on the side of the highway in California last year. Was it last year or the year before? Can't remember, it was recently. I want to talk about is uh, Ray Rice. What's going on between him and his girlfriend? Like, like yeah. people don't fight, you know. Right, Couples been fighting since the beginning of the time. Hey, you know, that's not Jermaine of black people, but we want to be all in their business. But this officer who beat the hell out of his sister on the side of the highway, y'all got nothing to say about that, man. We got a problem. We got a problem, Houston. We got a problem. We out of line. We out of whack. We out of tune. We're not even doing natural things right now. Every community come over here and they live by a code. We don't have them. You know, 
I don't think it's coolish to sit here and, and you know concentrate on my own first. I got guns for white supremacists. I ain't worried about white supremacists. White supremacists don't mess with um, black men, ex-military. They don't. You don't. You don't see that. They run up in churches and shoot unarmed people. They run up on young kids like Trayvon, who they know ain't got no weapon and would never have done it if they didn't have a weapon on them. So white supremacists are, are cowards. I'm not worried about them. My first layer of the uh, issues is between black people. That's the first layer of any oppression for any black men is other black men and black women. They're the first trial and tribul tribulation. It's a black woman who goes to the court system. It's a black man that goes out there and kills a brother for stepping on his shoes. Or with some female. These are the real issues we need to deal with first. Because I'm a mathematic person. I can't expect nobody to have empathy for me. Yeah, we can talk about justice. We live in a system of justice. And it's right to go after the cops in the system because the system's supposed to be for everybody. Right? It's supposed to be for everybody, right? So that's, that's a just cause. But come on now, we got issues in our family. We can't keep laughing away, and we can't keep praying it away. We got to deal with this today, ladies and gentlemen. We got to deal with this now. We got to be honest about situations. Let's fast forward, let's rewind back. Before we fast forward, let's rewind for a second. Let's go back to that brother in South Carolina that got shot in his back who was running away from child support. This whole child support thing is getting old. It's getting tired. It's ridiculous. No woman in the world, no other woman in the world throw their men in jail over nonsense like this. Black women, you're being used by the system to arrest your men. They don't care about your, you or your children. They're out there killing your children. They're throwing your children down at pool parties. They don't care about your children. The system's not there for you. At the end of the day, all we got is us. That brother was running away because he was tired of going to jail. It was stupid. It's, you know, he's too old. He, it was a dumb thing to do to run away. He didn't deserve to die for it. It was real goofy. It's, at, at best, it wasn't nothing, you know, really crazy about it. But I, I get it, man. I've been in jail for a day or two. And it sucked. <laughs> Imagine being in jail for weeks or months over nonsense. Over personal stuff. We gotta stop using this court system and this white man to deal with your man. You can't be that immature. You can't be that selfish. We are in a system of white supremacy. There's no one to turn to. If you got issues with your man, you come to me, your brothers. We'll tighten them up. That's how we used to do things back in the day. Yeah, I'm part of that last generation. I'm in my 30s. But I'm from that last generation where we handle things internally. We didn't turn the cops for every little thing. We got sisters out here calling the cops when they retarded children. Or their children got mental health issues and the cops going in and killing them. You can't turn to nobody else. All we have is us. You know, I mean, we got to be honest with ourselves right now. We're not dealing with reality. I watched a video the other day, uh, that was on Dr. Joyce, uh, not Joyce, Dr. Boyce Watkins channel on YouTube, and I was watching this video he put up uh, all these young ladies, you know, getting into it with the cops at the pool, another pool party. I think this is somewhere else in the middle of the country. It wasn't in Texas. But... I don't know what happened before, and I don't really know what happened after. I don't know why they was arrested. I don't know if it was a legitimate reason or not. But I can tell you this. Their behavior was a little bit, you know, ridiculous. You know? If you listen to what the girls were saying, like, they couldn't believe. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my mama. I can't believe. What you, what you can't believe? Who's your parents? Your parents didn't teach you about white supremacy? They haven't taught you about racial injustice? They haven't taught you about the police state? You see what I'm saying? So I'm not blaming the kids for saying what they were saying. I'm trying to highlight something here. Look, look what's coming out their mouth. They're in a state of delusion. Our people are in a state of delusion. We are at war. Whether you want to or not, it doesn't matter what you want. They've declared war on you. Listen to Fox News. Listen to Right Wing Radio. They're declaring war on you. White people are at war with everybody. They're at war with the Mexicans. They're at war with us. They're at war with Arabs. They're at war with Muslims. They never got along with nobody on this planet since they've been here. That's the reality. 
Yeah, there's some good white people out here who want to get along and just get through life, you know, and raise their kids, and, you know, they don't want no problems. But they're not the ones in power. You know? They're not the ones sitting in robes. They're not the ones sitting in prosecution offices. They're not the ones, you know what I mean? You understand? So they're irrelevant. War's been waged on here. Baltimore, riots, injustice, economic injustice, racial injustice. For years, decades, what you don't understand. Yeah, the name of this video is gonna be delusion. It's, we gotta have real talk. Baltimore has been in the same situation it's been in for 50 plus years. And they need to extend that because it was probably, you know, not that much better before the riots and the situations back in the, the 60s. But that same state is cutting education. But right before they cut education, they increased money for prisons. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the key part. It's, you know, like prisons are not bad enough. You know, they, they're not just building prisons. They're building detention centers, youth detention centers. They're going after your children. They know the education system has failed. They don't, they're not trying to fix the education system. They're not trying to educate your children. This is on you. You got to stop thinking like a welf, wel, welfare recipient. Back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, black people taught each other. We had geniuses coming out of our schools. And we had books missing pages, books with no covers. In some places in the country, we had floors with no floors. They were just dirt floors. You understand? You can't even call them floors. They was, they was in the ground. They were sitting on the ground. But teaching each other, teaching each other basics, math, reading, science, and most importantly, history. But history from our perspective. You know? That's what we had. And we don't have it no more. We depend on other people to teach our children. People who don't care about our children. And unfortunately, we got a lot of black agents and people who side with white supremacy and side with the culture of white supremacy and side with the system of white supremacy that they're willing to go along with it. They're willing to tell other teachers, even at black colleges, that you can't teach black history. Is that crazy? <laughs> I mean, you can't write this. Yeah, it's happening. We in Jim Crow again. And y'all don't even know it. Because you got a cell phone, because you got an iPhone, because you got Facebook, and you can Snapchat and, and Instagram all day. You think you're free. All you doing is making those people money. That's another conversation for another day. We're gonna get into economics on another on another video. But right now we're gonna just stick with delusion. Let's, let's have reality talk. We have to grow up, people, and deal with reality. We don't have time for this nonsense no more. We're losing out here. We're losing out here. And y'all don't even know it. And you so-called mothers, if y'all really care about your children and love your children, then think about what I'm talking about. You can't be so concerned with your emotions and how you feel and what somebody said and how offended you are when your offense is based in nothing. Ladies, your children are at stake and you need your brothers, you need your man. If you don't think so, then fine. Go out there and get your white man and you'll learn the same. You'll learn, you'll learn what they really think about you when they call you nigga to your face behind your back in an argument. You think I'm bullshitting and ask Holly, Holly Berry. Holly Berry is one of the baddest sisters that ever lived on the planet. Beautiful, talented, and she got no respect. So go ahead, go out there, do your thing. And I'd rather you do anyway, because you're no use to us if you got that mentality. Ladies, it's time to go. Brothers, it's time to step up and be men, and it's time to deal with reality. It's time to stop playing games. This is your brother Jay Sean. I, I love you all, man. And I only can do what I can do for my level, but at the end of the day, we need each other. This is a group effort that needs to take place. Like Dr. Claude Anderson said, racism is a team sport.
and other groups that come to this country don't play for other teams. They play for their own. The Chinese ain't playing. The Japanese ain't playing. These people come from Africa, from Ethiopia to Nigeria. They're not playing. They have appropriate behavior. We don't. The Hispanics don't play. Watch. Watch them. Go to any 7-Eleven and see how these people who don't know each other and they come from different countries. They come from different countries in Central America and how they get along. All right? So this is your brother. I'm out.